four ordinary guys with extraordinary ideas for Disney parks. This is Main Street Musings. The experimental podcast of tomorrow. That's right, you are listening to Main Street Musings, the experimental podcast of tomorrow. My name is Jake, and I am joined today by the person who always has to take the best spot, Tanner. Hey. The person who has to constantly be reminded to stay behind the rope, Brock. I'm just trying to get a good picture. And that kid who is always sitting on their parents' shoulders, Eric. (laughs) Man, I can't see. See, the thing with Eric is he's so short, he has to sit on somebody's <laughs> shoulders in order to see, right, Eric? Small. The small only is how word that's ever Eric. been used to describe me is small. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Small minded, <laughs> small yeah. morally. Small and down. <laughs> small. <laughs> with a big heart. <laughs> It's a medical issue. <laughs> With a big, empty heart. Everybody talks about the Grinch's heart growing two sizes being a good thing. No, he died that day. <laughs> the physical exertion of robbing the whole town really wore him down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In case you haven't figured it out today, we are pitching parade ideas. I don't know how they couldn't have figured that out. (laughs) (laughs) That is a staple at Disney parks is the parade. Many people love and adore them. Some people are annoyed by them, but I think the average Disney goer loves the parades. Guys, what are some classic parades that we can think of? The electrical Uh, parade. That was the one. Favorite. Yes. Uh, What's the one? Is it World of Color? Is that the one at Disneyland right now? Yes. Something that yes. sounds like that, yeah. Uh, okay. I I really like their holiday parades. They have a great Halloween parade that I love. Yes, I don't know. Are you guys, are you guys ready to pitch? Are you feeling good about your ideas? Dude, ready feels, as I'll ever be. I feel so good. Let's let's go. It's the part where we make a pitch. It looks like first up pitching today, Brock Gavin. Hey, that's me. Okay, so I was trying to think about uh, parades and essentially the way they move and the way they are. And what it is is it's a long line of one thing following the next, and that reminded me of trains. So my idea for a parade is going to be based on Casey Jr., the train from Dumbo. No. So it's going to be a circus train. So essentially the train is going to start with Casey Jr., And then following are going to be all the different floats, each of which carries a different character from a different Disney property, all doing performative circus-esque acts. Uh, And then finally, I was thinking the ones that I kind of wrote down are going to be like Lilo and Stitch doing some sort of like hula, obviously like the big six are going to be doing different things. Mickey, Donald, Goofy, you want all of them in there. And then I'd like to have uh, Esmeralda from Hunchback of Notre Dame. You know, she has a a bunch of circus sort of vibe. And also I was thinking Bugs Life because that is a circus and just a few different ones. And if we get, we vote for this, I'd like to flesh some more of those out. But I was thinking finally comes the caboose and you could have Now, this is a little bit blue sky, but there's definitely a way to kind of extend a sort of Dumbo puppet who looks like he's flying behind the caboose. And I think that's just a fun, nice way to end the parade. I like it. Cool. Nice. That's fun. Yeah. I love Dumbo. Yeah. It's a classic. I haven't seen the the redo. I haven't seen, like, any of the redos. (laughs) I saw it. It was... I mean, you guys know how I feel about the live action remake. I don't <laughs> like them at all. Yeah, same. Dumbo, I mean, like, the thought was there. Tim Burton was there. It was just boring. That's unfortunate. For a really not boring movie, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Anyways, looks like I am up next. All right. In the parade pitch. My pitch is, is a smaller scale What I uh, coming up. With my parade, I didn't latch on to any ideas that I really loved that were, like, full-scale, end-to-end, it's, like, 15, 20, 30-minute parades. I, I really wanted a smaller, so, like, just take the idea that, like, a parade is something that move and that people could follow or that people can sort of chase around, or, or at, the, at the very least, it's on, like, a float 
like a moving device. Yeah. So mine is, uh, if we talk about parks specifically, would be in the Orleans Square District of Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And it would be a one to three float mini parade focusing around the Aristocats as well as potentially Princess and the Frog and Soul as a celebration of jazz music. Oh, sweet. It's cool. Yeah. So it would be like people up on floats, like the band themselves would be on these vehicles. And I mm-hmm. sort of envision that as where we, we place the characters potentially from Soul and Princess and the Frog that are playing the music and the rest of it. Like it's sort of a melding of all three. And then you have a group of people, a group of characters, cats and animals mixed in together on the ground dancing to the songs that they're playing. Yeah. And it's a, very small, very compact. That area can't really sustain like a full scale, like electrical parade style uh, event. So something that uh, is feasible within the bounds of the the area that it's put in, and is a nice celebration of something that doesn't necessarily get its due in a lot of places. The Aristocats and jazz music in general. So yeah. I agree. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. And I have to say, Eric, I, I do I do think it's a bold decision um, that we're going to, you know, actually, when we're watching the parade, we're actually going to see the family as they go into the talent agency. That's not <laughs> something I expected to see at a Disney park. <laughs> <laughs> the aristocrat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong, wrong thing. Uh, I'm sorry. God, can we do an episode where we just pitch our own version of the aristocrats? <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be on our OnlyFans. <laughs> it's fascinating stuff. Next up, Tanner. Okay, so one of the things that intrigues me about Disney's parades is their ability to incorporate technology into the parades to whether that's the main street electrical parade all the way back with the lights first starting and that just being mind blowing. So my idea was to incorporate some screens into mine. So my parade is called enchanted magic come to life. For those of you who don't know the plot of the movie enchanted involves animated characters entering the real world. So that will kind of be the theme of my ride. I kind of wanted to tell a story with this parade of the evil queen Narcissa kind of trying to cast a spell to destroy everyone's happiness and it backfiring and bringing her and her minions into the park along with fantasy characters from Enchanted as well as other properties that would be inhabiting Disneyland or Magic Kingdom at the time and using screens to kind of have animated shows of what is happening and then transitioning that into the performers coming out in real life on the same flow, acting out and waving and exploring the new world together. So that's my general idea. Huh. Awesome. That's really fascinating, Tanner. That's that's a cool idea. Hey guys, Thank remember you. the, uh, the mid-2000s when Disney was really into licensing products of like half fantasy world, half real world? <laughs> we got like six seasons of Once Upon a Time and an entire <laughs> movie about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> it, they're just like really into it. Anyway, to T, that's a Enchanted great Enchanted is great, it's, though. Thank you. Enchanted's awesome. And so that's the first, why they're like, making a sequel. Yeah. yeah, and so are the first like four seasons of Once Upon a Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about the last two seasons. We just let them exist in the youth. Yeah, Jake, because I know you're not in the know here. Uh, season seven pulls a Scrubs. Oh, that's it's in rough. a different setting with yeah, almost entirely different characters. <laughs> is that the show where Roger Daltrey guest starred? As the caterpillar, and he had literally one line. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I watched that scene because I'm just a big nerd for the Who. Anyway, <laughs> next up for our pitches, we have Mr. Jake. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, for my pitch, I was thinking, is there a Disney movie that has a parade existing that we could bring to life that's in the movie? Is there a way I can do less work? I was going to say, real lazy, Jake. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I want to hear it. 
guys. The first one that popped into my head that would be fun to experience in real life was from Hunchback of Notre Dame, one of my favorite Disney movies. The topsy-turvy sequence. Come one, come all. Leave your looms and milking stools. Coop the hens and pen the mules. When Clopin sings that. Thank you <coughs> for that. You guys seem to so You might impressed. be the only person in the world who knows the lyrics to that <laughs> song. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the scene in the movie where they're getting ready to have the Feast of Fools. And they're seeing about how everything is topsy-turvy. And in the movie, you see a lot of cool floats and costumes, which I think would be really fun to see in real life. And it's just a fun celebration. In fact, it's arguably the most fun part of the movie, of a very <laughs> dark movie. And in fact, it leads into a very dark and disturbing scene. But that would not be part of my parade. <laughs> so that's Coward. my pitch. Well, my question is answered. (laughs) Speaking of questions, does that mean we're ready to move on to the question and answer? I think so. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, you know what? Let's do it. It's the part where we do Q and a. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll start off um, just with a real quick, I forgot to mention where my park is going to be. That's either going to be magic kingdom or Disneyland. Probably Magic Kingdom because Disneyland already has an attraction. But my question is, Jake, yeah. where's yours going to be? Yeah, I realize I forgot to say that as well. My thought was it would be good in the Magic Kingdom or in Disneyland. It just seems kind of like to fit that royalish kind of thing. Um, unless you guys thought of a better place for it to be. Hurricane Harbor. Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's Hurricane Harbor? Oh, that's a, a Six Flags Magic Mountains water park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't think of where that is. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I forget, did, did you mention T where yours is going to be? Yes, I did. Thank you for listening. You're it welcome. would either be in the Magic Kingdom <laughs> or Disneyland because those both are fantasy inspired, which is the most fitting theming for Enchanted. That's so I guess yeah. all of us Thank are you. in Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, Magic but mine's Kingdom. Yeah, a very specific part of Disneyland. That's true. Yeah, Eric. I can't be in the Magic Kingdom. That's I true. I am the most niche. <laughs> I am the hipsterist. <laughs> that, that tracks with my, specif- with my locality specificity Eric would your parade be at all like Mardi Gras inspired in terms of like design elements of the parade because I know you have it in like Orleans Square I was thinking that that could be a flexible uh, thing it, it depends on how the, it would end up being implemented if it became like a staple of the Orleans Square experience it would be a Mardi Gras would happen during Mardi Gras, right? They would be added, like an added bonus of coming during this time is that like it would there would be beads and more celebration. If it was a sh- like a, a more short term engagement as its own parade, then yes, Mardi Gras elements would be incorporated as part of the full experience. Cool. Neat. Yeah. Tanner. Yes. You said that the characters would be coming out of the the screen. Do you have an idea of how that would work? So I think it's more so there are screens on the parades that will then not light up and they can or the screen would change into part of the real world. So the main one that helped me solidify this idea was like you have the flow of Giselle animated and she's falling into a well. Okay. And so you have screens lit up on the sides that are like showing her tumbling down and down and down, almost like she's fallen through onto the ground. And then those transition into just regular prayed design. And she comes out of a thing underneath, like she's climbing out of the manhole underneath the float contraption. So it's more they're enhancing it in different ways. It's not necessarily they come out of the screen. I was thinking you can also use like mini projectors like you would with like projection mapping things on more of like flat screens that can come down and up instead of like LEDs, you know? Okay. It's ambitious. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. But hey, that's that's what this show is for. (laughs) Does anybody have any questions for me? 
<laughs> uh, will there so will there be other songs from Hunchback in it? Will we get to hear Hellfire? Will we get to hear all of these classics? I had actually thought this would just be topsy turvy, a quick parade that goes through okay. a more direct question, which is what is the scope of the topsy turvy parade? So you're saying it's a nice quick parade. How many floats do you envision? How long of a front to back experience are you? Thinking I was it's thinking like just a quick midday goes through Disney. If you happen to be there when it goes through, it's like, oh, hey, quick, the Topsy Turvy Parade. This is fun. You know, like 20 minutes, five, six floats. I mean, the song in the movie is like a five minute sequence. So I was thinking if we just like kept it kind of around that song, made it quick, you know. Okay. And then it kind of moves through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My my question for you, Jake, is the Hunchback the only property you want to include in this, or is yeah. it? Okay. Yep. Were there other properties in yours, Brock? Yeah. So my, my idea was kind of bringing in a lot of different Disney properties, like a lot of the parades do, where there's like a, a section devoted to different Disney properties with sort mm-hmm. of the the big five or six characters, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, that that group kind of sprinkled throughout. Yeah. And then also, of course, starting and ending with Dumbo. Right. The average Disney parade nowadays is multiple properties, which is fine. I have nothing against it. I like that. But I also kind of wanted to try it with just Hunchback. I know they used to have a Lion King parade that was just Lion King. So they've done it before. Yeah, that parade was cool. Yeah. I think, I think we're I think we're ready. I think I think we're ready to vote. It's the part where we vote. Who votes first, Tanner? Ooh, it looks like Eric is up first. I rolled my pyramidal structure. (laughs) All right, all right, all right, okay. (laughs) I will bear the burden of the first vote today. I like them. All three ideas are very strong. I like the idea of short parades. I'm at a point in my life where everything theatrical should be as short as possible. Uh, Nice and condensed and really tell a nice quick story. I I think I'm going to go with Tanner's today. I uh, I like the idea of the the in and out mirrors and and all that. I do want to revisit the Dumbo one as well. I think that's a really cool like the striking image of Dumbo in the back of the parade is something that I think we should pursue at some point. For me, this is a, a problem solver kind of vote. I want uh, the discussion the discussion portion of how we solve the screens to real life problem is interesting to me, so that is why I, my vote goes there. Nice. Oh, not because you like it. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> said what I said. <laughs> Just take the vote and move on. With your All vote. right, Brock, you're up. Okay, um, I think of the ones I really like them all, the one that's grabbing me the most is going to be Eric's, uh, the Orland Square... New Orleans Square, Aristocats, jazz sort of thing. Thanks, man. Jake, you are up. Okay, so I am really into these ideas. I love the idea of bringing jazz into Disney. I really think the coming out of the screens thing is cool, but I'm going to throw my vote for classic Disney and go with the Casey Jr. one with Brock. All right. I am also going to vote for Casey Jr. I love them all. But the Dumbo at the end seems really fun, and it feels like a very cool one with all these circus acts. And they'll give us an opportunity to talk about a lot of different IP that we can use. So that's going to be my vote. Nice. Congratulations, Brock. I think it's definitely the parade that I could envision them doing. That's the thing that they would actually put up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's exciting. Because we don't often talk about those ideas. We don't yeah, talk so about the Yeah, so way to think outside the box, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, the corporate well, in man. A way, I'm thinking outside the box of this podcast. <laughs> Brock Chapek. I'm that's thinking true. something that's actually marketable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. So we have voted. We are going with Casey Jr. Brock, why don't you talk a little bit more about what you're what you're thinking so before we get into discussion time? 
if there's anything more. Yeah, essentially, I just want to start with that Casey Jr. train. The the whole thing's going to be set to the song. And the way they often do the parades is it's one musical theme that changes depending on the uh, float that's nearest you. So I figure we can kind of do that musical theme being the Casey Jr. song. You know, Casey Jr. coming down the track. Um, and I think... Okay, sorry. Yep, thank you, Jake. You know, changing the style of that as it goes on would be fun. Yeah. And I think each float could kind of showcase some sort of performance or circus type act. Just something fun and kinetic on each float. Maybe some dancers and performers on the ground. Hell, we could even add an Aristocrats, Aristocats jazz float. I actually <laughs> was thinking that, that yeah. yeah. When you were talking, I was thinking taking some of those elements from your parade would actually really fit into mine. How can I yeah. steal from somebody else's parade? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically, yeah. The Brock I was taking story. notes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a ton of fun. the The first thing that jumps to my mind is like uh, an Aladdin float that is playing music that's in the, the a little more of that Middle Eastern kind of rhythm and tempo to it. Uh, mm-hmm. That's also the Casey Jr. thing, and having like Prince Ali style acrobatics things going on. That a, sounds really cool. Yeah, with like way into genie. The, Circus thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like the genie's leading, he's clapping along, we got people doing flips. We yeah. got a hundred bad guys with swords kind of thing, you know. I, I want to see yeah. literally a hundred of them, too. <laughs> 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 That'd be kind of a funny moment, though. There's like a hundred bad guys with swords, and there's just like one guy standing with a sword, and he's like looking around. And like, <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's... Right off the bat, Eric bringing great ideas. Yeah, way better than anything. And we Brock can see like the peacocks with. and the uh, the golden camels. having those uh, acrobats and like uh, there's like a fire breather and you know that sort of really old school entertainment. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's really cool. So what other IPs? Honestly, Jake's is also a really good fit for putting it in. I did mention. Actually, uh, in my original pitch that I wanted to include some, like, Esmeralda, Quasimodo, Hunchback stuff, and I was thinking of that scene. Do, you know, an Esmeralda dance and the the other performative, uh, just people in those style change the music, have her and Quasimodo doing a fun dance, not the sexy dance that she does in the movie. (laughs) (laughs) You've lost me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Brock, how is it supposed to be fun if it's not sexy? Come on. Uh, <laughs> also, I'd like to point out seen so this podcast? another idea <laughs> that uh, Brock stole from a podcast member. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I had that one before he did his pitch. So there. I can't wait to see what he steals from you, Tanner. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, Tanner, I think what makes Brock's idea a winning one is that it has the potential to seamlessly incorporate the rest of our ideas into a grander scheme thing hey eric so good job Brian. i don't know if you Thank kind you, of eric. know the tone of this podcast but we're not usually that nice to each other so shut up <laughs> especially brock i was gonna say no you guys aren't usually that nice to me <laughs> well to be fair brock you're the one who likes to criticize our lightning round pitches the most so we have to beat you down the rest of the episode but i do have another idea for a float that's a little more out there what if we did a phineas and ferb float from the episode where they did their circus I'm oh, down. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, I think Phineas and Ferb is one of those Disney cartoon yes. properties that's grown beyond just being a Disney Channel show. It's closer to the rest of the IP that you'll see in a park. Yeah. So I think Phineas and Ferb doing that that one, I think that's great. Yeah. I don't recall that episode. So what are I they know doing? Uh, Baljeet like does his like thumb trick where he like pretends to take his thumb off of his hand as one. When you're at a loss, yeah. you can always incorporate Perry the Platypus and Doofenshmirtz doing something chaotic while they're trying to do their circus thing of like having like a action thing of mm-hmm, Perry yeah. like dipping around and waving and then tripping Doofenshmirtz and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I need to get into <laughs> Phineas and Ferb. It's phenomenal. I love Phineas and Ferb. I mean, and you got to remember, like, it was designed so that little kids could watch it and enjoy it. Well, yeah. But 
Also, it was designed by two very funny adults who wanted adults to get enjoyment out of it, too. You know? <laughs> oh, you can have Buford bounce to the and land in mud on the parade was his trick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, Buford. I forgot. That's like the whole thing. Yeah. The whole episode. He's just talking about how it doesn't matter what he does as long as he can land in mud. Right. He just wants to end up covered in mud. It doesn't matter what so his trick what is. Happens, he just has to be covered yeah. in mud. <laughs> that, that tracks. Yeah, and then I'm sure Ferb and Phineas and Isabella actually do like interesting. Yeah, yeah I believe there was like lion taming master. involved and yeah. acrobatics. And so you can incorporate them and their costumes doing their things as well on that float. And I think that sounds like a lot of fun. So I, as a kinetic element to the uh, jazz float that exists, damn it, it exists in this parade, mm-hmm. um, would be a more traditional vaudevillian performance. So you have like your your circus acts like high wires, fire breathers, Swords, things like that. And then around this jazz float, you have more like tumblers or, you know, the that kind of classic 1800s, early 1900s sort of vaudevillian solo performance. Yeah, yeah that's great. And I, I really love the idea of a jazz. And I briefly was thinking earlier as you were talking, like, how do I make vaudeville work? <laughs> um, but I'm glad that you found a way because I was just going to give up on it. Yeah, no, that's really cool. So the jazz float would be, I'm thinking probably Aristocats because they're fun and they have, you yeah. know, that really fun, you know, that everybody wants to be a cat scene. And obviously it's a different tune that they're playing, but, you know, they really get into it and that yeah. the, whole, the whole float is like bouncing up and down. And cats tumbling around in vaudeville costumes and doing vaudeville performances is adorable. So we should do that. <laughs> yeah, we all know it worked so well when they made a movie about it a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Another IP I was thinking we could do something with would be uh, Lilo and Stitch, uh, a sort of hula performance. I know that doesn't necessarily fit into like circus, but I think. Well, David does the fire dancing in Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, well, we can incorporate all of that. That way we have Lilo and Stitch actually doing. Yeah, Some if there's anything the you want to mix, it's uh, characters in big clunky costumes mm-hmm. with hula skirts yeah. with uh, fire. <laughs> well, yeah. I figure with fire, we, yeah. Of maybe course. the Some fire dancers can be like kind of like the people who like walk near the parades. You know, they're and, like, up on a platform, yeah. surrounding the float. <laughs> yeah, maybe. One of the things I love about that, and that I think the idea of, of this parade that I am super excited about is moving through musical traditions and uh, while keeping the Casey Jr. song is incredible and so you switch into like a uh, ukulele Hawaiian sort of yeah. uh, Hello Mal- Malachi kind of tone to that and I, I just think that's incredible and that's, yeah. like, that's where my mind's going is like what IP can we introduce that brings in like a new musical subset of this Casey Jr. song. Hawaii is a great option. Yeah, yeah I kind of wanted really there to that. be a, a bit of a multicultural thing as well. Yeah. Because uh, then, you know, it's just fun that way, it, where it's all these different sounds. Mm-hmm. Those were the ideas I had. I was wondering if you guys had any more. Well, we've been pouring some in. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I was thinking maybe we could, because we've kind of been starting at IPs and working toward the parade, maybe we can start at... Uh, Circus ideas and then work toward the IP. Uh, what about the Star Wars Cantina Band? Can that be a parade? <laughs> I think I would prefer to leave Star Wars out of it. Well, I thought we were pitching what Disney would realistically do, which is put the Star Wars Cantina Band in the in the parade. Yes, yeah, so we have to shoehorn Star Wars in. That is they true. They would definitely do an Avengers float too, uh, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> But to your to your idea, Brock. Yes, let's do let's circus ideas. My favorite circus act is guy who gets shot out of a cannon. How could we incorporate that? I think that would be a great one for Donald or Goofy. Mm, yeah. You know, having one of them dressed up with the daredevil outfit, uh, yeah. sticking their head out of a cannon. You know, looking scared and let's say it's, well, it's Donald. Like Goofy would be into it and thinking it's a good idea. And Donald would be like, no, 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 don't stop, stop, stop. And like somebody could be like stuffing him into the can and maybe Goofy. I think it could. I think think it's Donald and Daisy, you know, so it's 
Donald is the daredevil and Daisy's like the assistant who's like stuffing him into the cannon uh, and gonna light the cannon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like I like that it's like a a, a two part beat though with like Goofy just getting in himself and be like, "This is gonna be fun as fuck," and then uh, <laughs> Donald's gonna. <laughs> I believe you mean fun is yuck. <laughs> yeah. Fun is yuck. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's certainly something we could do. I was for some reason kind of picturing, and it might be difficult, but I'm sure that'd be a way to do it. But like having Goofy as like a tightrope walker and like, Ooh. yeah, plus like. Can't balance. You know, they could actually like, you know, have him on a harness or some support, but just like whoa, wobbling back and yeah. forth on a t- tightrope. Is Mickey our ringmaster making appearances sort of scattered throughout? Yeah, I was thinking we could have R- Mickey as the ringmaster either at the front or at the back, kind of start off the parade or end it. That's usually what they like to do with Mickey. Mm-hmm. And I think that that works. I think Mickey driving the first float would be the best because then our big thing at the end is this uh, Dumbo Dumbo flying, you know. I agree. I was wondering if there's a way to incorporate Robin Hood because, you know, that sort of sharpshoot knife throwing kind of danger act is a big staple of circuses. And I think he's the closest character to having, you know, with the bow and arrow. Do you guys think that works or? Well, in the movie, that scene is kind of a parade when all of the shooters are coming in. They all parade in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And again, speaking from like a musical perspective, that gives us a nice little medieval jingle into the the song, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I so... It would have to be staged very carefully, but you could have Robin Hood uh, shoot like a hat off of somebody or uh, an apple above somebody's head. That's a very circusy kind of daredevil act to do. Yeah, yeah and I mean, obviously, I'd, he wouldn't actually be shooting the bow and arrow, but you can just pose it to make it look like it. And you know, it's a lot of it's probably a lot of him just like bowing and waving, and then going to shoot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, and that <laughs> could be like another place for a Donald or a Goofy to be like the assistant and be like, "No, don't do this to me," unless he shoots an arrow <laughs> off of their head. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that would be like Little Johnny shooting the arrow off the head, though, and then that way we can kind of preserve Donald and Goofy for their own flow rather than making them the uh, deuteragonist of someone else's which is a word i learned yesterday congratulations thank you so explain your new word brock uh it's the second lead character in a story thanks i'm sure our listeners will be appreciative brock you're a real (laughs) doucheragonist thanks man i love it Oh, to answer your question, Brock, yes. I think Robin Hood would be an excellent incorporation into this parade. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And we definitely don't want any of the main like five or six to feel like deuteragonist on any of the other <laughs> floats. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> New drinking rule. Drink every time you hear the word deuteragonist <laughs> on the podcast. I'm sure it's going to stick around. <laughs> Just looking at a character perspective, the last of, like, the Fab Five that we don't really have represented is Minnie. I think it'd be neat to give Minnie her own float. So what is she doing? She's going to be dancing sexy? (laughs) With Esmeralda? (laughs) (laughs) No, that would make her a deuteragonist. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, uh, so I don't know. What's, What's a circus act we're missing? Um, trapeze, <laughs> lion, tamer. lion tamer, lion tamer. You know, yeah. oh, what could be fun is she's she has a cat, Figaro, Figaro, Her pet cat Figaro. She could be like taming him, and he's dressed as a lion. <laughs> oh yeah, that's actually kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, come on, Figaro, and like she has him like jumping through hoops and Way stuff. Way to turn my joke response into an actual working thing, Brock. <laughs> I think it is cute and a decent idea. I also don't want us to be painting Minnie as anything less than a badass lion tamer in terms of, like, messaging. 
Yeah, um, that's true. I don't true. want us to be like the the sort of like the the person that little girls look up to isn't doing things on the same level as everybody else. Yeah. Um. So I would love it if it was more like a lion dressed as Figaro or something like that. that. Might be a little confusing. With not just though. a lion. Yeah. Not just a lion. <laughs> yeah. Just a lion. Yeah. Just <laughs> many being a lion tamer might be. <laughs> but also not okay, like with a whip okay, or guys. anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it clear that she's taming the lion through non-animal cruelty-related means. Yeah, right, that was yeah. the main reason why I was like, yeah, Figaro's cute is because I don't want her actually whipping an actual lion. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, it wouldn't be an actual lion. <laughs> it would be like no. an animatronic or something. <laughs> no, it would be an actual lion. Okay. On loan from Animal Kingdom. <laughs> All right, let's see. So we, we start with Casey Jr. Um, we also have Aladdin, Lilo and Stitch, Hunchback, Aristocats. We have Donald uh, getting shot out of a cannon. We have Goofy maybe doing a tr- sort of gymnast, tight wire, trapeze kind of act. We have a Robin Hood danger act. We have mini taming lions. We have Dumbo at the end. Did I miss anything? Actually, when you lay it all out like that, I think we did really good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brock, this was a really cool idea. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I do want to talk just a little bit more about is this uh, Dumbo at the end, just because yeah. that was a thing that I was just really impressed by when you had your initial pitch. That was a thing where I was like, okay, well, we got to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are you thinking of that being more of like a balloon or like a flying animatronic or how are we just picturing that working? Uh, yeah, okay, so I was thinking probably a way to do it would be having some sort of line, like, he's literally connected to the float on, like, some sort of pole, but just decorating that to make it look like it's a part of it, so it's not, and then he is an animatronic that moves, obviously, like, a lightweight one that wouldn't fall. That way, he's connected to the float, and he can just move and flap and kind of sway side to side as he's flying behind the the parade. That would totally work, because that's kind of how they get the uh, floating mountains in the Pandora world of Avatar, is by just making, like, enforced steel look like other things to support. So you could definitely do that with, like, a, like, decorated, like, rope with, like, flashing lights on it. So it's not, like, scary, like he's being drugged by <laughs> Dumbo's neck. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> flying around like that. And then that can support your animatronic that's up in the sky. And that's really cool, Brock. I like that a lot. Yeah. I thought that'd be really yeah, that neat. that was an awesome idea. Thanks. It was. Yeah. I mean, it's a really nice show-stopping ending, which is mm-hmm. what this parade deserves. We built a parade that deserves a show-stopper. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, nice great job. job. You Good job. It had a theme that really worked for creating like a full parade experience, which I think is very important. And I will say I'm very sad that Disney probably won't do this, but also this seems like something they could and should do yeah yeah this is honestly the closest thing we've ever done to uh, a pitchable idea to <laughs> to disney yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> it's something we could just take to them and they would say yeah we can do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> all right jakey spin the wheel it's the lightning round i think we're ready for that wheel of lightning spin 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 all right we are doing a drop ride or a drop tower themed to lilo and stitch okay i think i've got something i think i've got something too i just hope somebody doesn't me too i just feel like it's all gonna be the same things (laughs) i hope you guys are (laughs) proud of yourselves because i do not Uh, tanner Roll our pyramidal structure. So Tanner has hijacked that job. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Okay, I'm going to do this one legit, though. <laughs> <laughs> Implying that Eric doesn't. <laughs> oh, no, I meant because I don't think he does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so Eric, you are up first. So, my idea is going to be, we are, it's a, it's a Tower of Terror, 
style uh, multi-drop ride. Uh, much more happily themed, though. We're going to be surfing on the waves of Hawaii and crashing down through the waves each time that we peek. Uh, we were losing control a little bit of our surfboard and falling a little bit more each time down into the water. This will include an experience where we actually go underneath the wave and have to kind of ride it out above us. Um, up and down, up and down, and that's my pitch. Cool. I'm picturing that. That's really cool. All right, Brock, you are up next. Okay, so we are on a joyride with Stitch. He's taken the red one out for a flight. Uh, and Stitch, you know, is a crazy, reckless driver. So it's going to be similar to the Tower of Terror mechanism where we're going around up and down, and then we enter the the actual drop ride portion, and Stitch starts going up and down wildly, um, and he's screaming his head off, really enjoying himself, while we're screaming our heads off because we're terrified of his driving, and I think that would be a really fun moment. Cool. All cool. right. I like the subtle reinforcement at the end there, where it's all like, no, guys, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> It's just that's a psychological <laughs> ploy to make us all yeah. feel like, yeah, that is fun, even if we fucking hate it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't hate it. He's learned my trick. <laughs> It's my trick, too. I'm always like, it's wacky and fun, and you'll love it. (laughs) Right at the end. All right, and speaking of which, I am up next. All right, so Jumba has created a secret laboratory where he's been housing the some new experiments that he's come up with. Even though he's reformed, he just can't resist himself. So this is going to be like a Guardians of the Galaxy style drop ride where we're going to have incorporate screens, where we're going to be shooting up and down, and all of these different experiments are going to be doing inc- crazy things that are just going to terrify guests they're tormented they haven't been turned yet and we're going to be watching as lilo and stitch try to convert them into good things nice nice thank you it's fun it's wacky you're gonna have a great time (laughs) (laughs) all right and that leaves the father of the podcast jake (laughs) (laughs) all right hang on let me gotta get ready to go here gotta do my Stretches, warm up a little bit. Ugh. Oh, All right. stop <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we the riders have been kidnapped by Gantu, and he has loaded us into his ship, and he's going to be taking us up to the space prison that I cannot remember the name of. And the rocket ship takes off. <sighs> and it's slowly taking off and we're lifting in the sky and all of a sudden we hear Gantu what the and we hear Stitch and he saves us he starts sabotaging the ship and the ship comes plummeting back down and Gantu's like wait and it takes off again and it keeps going back and forth until eventually Stitch has saved us from the evil Gantu that is my pitch nice job I love the Stitch voice it's wacky and it's fun and you're gonna love it (laughs) well I genuinely think that was an incredible idea the the lasting image I will be left with is that the last fall is that Stitch has succeeded and we are just crashing plummeting with nothing (laughs) to to break our fall (laughs) we're in a a death fall we're definitely going to die (laughs) <laughs> but hey, it's wacky, it's fun, you're gonna have a great time. Uh, and for the record, I never want to be in charge of the pyramidal structure again. <laughs> it's just fault. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I was just trying to get us on course earlier. That was a fun episode, boys. Yeah, I felt good about it. I honestly I think all of our parades were great. Brock, yours of course was the best, as we had Thank determined. You. I think all of our lightning rounds were good too, honestly. Yeah. I would ride any of those happily. This was a surprisingly yeah. cogent episode. Yeah. I will be honest, I was a little around. nervous going <laughs> into the parade episode, but uh, I think it turned into something actually really fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that our bar is at surprisingly cogent. Um, <laughs> yep. Hey. <laughs> that's yeah. Man, that lightning round got <laughs> me excited for us potentially doing an episode on drop rides later. Yeah, that would yeah. be yeah. Hey, I'm excited that for that coming idea. up soon. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, Brock, why don't you take us out of here? All righty. Oh, look! Here comes our Instagram float, Tanner. <laughs> oh, oh look at that float, main underscore street <laughs> underscore musings. And I really hope this parade has some Facebooks, Jake. <sighs> this is so cheap. 
Facebook.com slash Main Street Musings. Wait, what the hell was I supposed to do with this? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. I think you we created a creative. this guideline for yourself that you had to create wacky ways to introduce our things that you added in like episode four. So now you've been trying to find ways to skirt around it. <laughs> And you can find us on Twitter at MSM underscore podcast. Thank you, Eric. And I'm Brock. <laughs> Everyone make sure to rate, review us, leave us five stars, and tell your friends. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Don't rain on my parade. <laughs>